this here is the stock master cylinder for the brakes. It is known as a single reservoir. You can see on the end there, both of the lines teeing to one spot where the brake light switch is. These were pretty standard on anything hydraulic brakes up until about 65. I'm going to pull that off and put a dual on there. Much safer. Should have just used my cutting torch. It's always easier with fire. See, it has been there for a minute. Definitely time for uh, some replacement. My wife was driving my shoebox forward a couple years ago, scooting through the neighborhood. And uh, when she went to pull in the driveway, realized there was no brakes. She, uh, She continued driving up into our cul-de-sac and whipped around trying to break the speed on it. And she uh, ended up crashing through my back fence with no brakes. It was a very scary um, experience. So ever since then, whenever I build a car, first thing I do is make sure the brakes are gonna be up to par. Nobody, uh, nobody wants to be dead, that's for sure. This is a dual reservoir master cylinder, specifically for the three bolt applications. You can see it's got two different reservoirs, one for the front, one for the back. I actually ordered this from Carrillo Speed. Um, should be relatively simple. Also got some residual valves that need to go in line there. These. So this thing has definitely been there a minute. I'm gonna see if I can pirate the um, brake light switch there. Look at this funny little nut on there. I don't know how long it's been there, but it's been there probably longer than I've been on the planet, which is a long fucking time. That thing. <clears throat> so one thing I was told to work with is the depth of this hole here. That's where the push rod goes into to make sure that the air gap is right. So I'm going to Measure all that and see if I can't not screw it up uh, on the first try. Break out my muddy uh, test gauge here. I bet you didn't know you could do that. That is going to be 1.5. That one is going to be 1.3. So I guess I'll have to adjust something there. Or just keep measuring until the number's right. I don't know. Measure twice, cut once, or cut, cut twice, measure three times, something like that. So one problem I'm having is this brace right here. It is 100% in my way. I have to uh, notch it out at least the front portion of it. From here to he here to here. And then I think I can squeeze it in and bolt it up. I don't know. I'm going to give that a try. Trim the floor, so I think we'll go six inches back from the front of the hole. Drill it out, 
and then we should be good. Bolt it in tight. Six and a half inches there. So I've managed to get this thing bolted on there, despite these bolts being, oh my God, super difficult to get to. That one took me about 40 minutes. Not bad, but it's still here. Gonna start replacing the brake lines. These things are, uh, we'll call them, well, they're not leaking, but they're, uh, I'm gonna think sketchy. This one's already been replaced. All the rubber hoses have already been replaced, so that's at least a step in the right direction. So I would like to say I made that hole big enough so I could access the brake light switch. Uh, in reality, I just uh, measured wrong and cut the hole wrong. You know, I'll just have a larger uh, cover for it. So this thing finally crapped out on me. Broke the bolt and stripped it out. So then I cobbled together this one, which doesn't work. Uh, so I had to get a little more creative. And now I got this magical bad boy. I actually borrowed it, but whatever. I'll probably keep it anyway. So I got this thing here. Trim a piece. Definitely always want to make sure your tubing cutter has uh, got a good wheel on it. Otherwise, it just mangles everything up. Don't want to be too aggressive with it because it'll smash the tube and then just cause more problems. This little reamer here, ream the end. Then you got these little blocks. Pops in there. Drop this guy in there. It's out. Snug it up nice. Then you have the inverted flare bit. That goes in there. Squish that baby down in there. Your little dial here. Put up the clues. Get a couple of pumps. Get the release. Never used one of these before. It is uh, super handy. Get that thing out of there. And you'll see it starts the first part of the flare and the second part of the flare, you use this one with the tapered end. Tighten that up on there. Close. And that is a perfect flare. And this is where you realize that you just screwed up. I forgot to put the damn ferrule on the other end. Uh, yeah. So you have to wonder, somebody spent the time to replace that one brake line. But you figure if one brake line was leaking, you would think you'd replace all of them. But no. Got almost uh, most of these done. I got two more to do and we'll start bleeding. If you ever wonder why your tire's so out of balance, a little uh, mud dauber uh, nest will do you wrong. So it was rumored that this car had all the brakes replaced on it. So let's double check it while we're here. These things should be repacked every so often anyway. But they look like, so far, it's good. <sighs> yes, brand new brake shoes and wheel cylinder. That is awesome. 
Brake drum's been turned. New bearings and seals. That is all good stuff. Not quite sure why they didn't paint the backing plate, but I think it'll be just fine for now. Got my brake bleeder all set up into my little uh, cup there. Now it's time to start getting the air out of these things. Well, at least that portion worked pretty well. I can't access it. Ooh, liquid gold. Well, not really, but I mean, whatever. Now, as they say, pumped in brakes. Hundreds of times. Uh, you were supposed to bench bleed these, which I, of course, did not do because I forgot. So now I have to probably do twice the work. Never get it right. You know, usual stuff. Nothing big. Much better. Got brakes. All new brake lines, pads, shoes, wheels, cylinders, all the good stuff. The next thing is to get some tires on this thing. I have them on order currently, but uh, they were out of stock. Uh, and I need to start lowering it. And then I think I'm going to uh, put some holes uh, in this there hood. I'm going to punch a bunch of louvers in there. And So this here is my louver punch. I made this thing about 15 years ago. I've done quite a few hoods on it. This was actually made of a three quarter inch piece of uh, steel that I took and ground and then hardened. Uh, I made the lower die, it's been pretty handy. This was actually my first English wheel. I had a as you can see bolts here, I had a English wheel I could bolt on there with a lower die and then I could put like a sheet metal bending brake, planishing hammer, a bunch of different things. It was sort of a multi-purpose tool. And uh, for about 10 years now, it's been solely just a louver punch. Anyways, gonna be uh, punching holes and uh, this thing today. I've had this thing mothballed for a long time, so I kind of have to relearn how to use it. So, to set my first row up, I'm going to use this brace here as a guide. We're going to start at uh, three and a quarter inches. Scribe a line, that'll be our first line. I'll do that on both sides. As far in as I could reach. I ended up having to cut the brace off the other hood, so I'll just go ahead and remove this one while I'm here. Is uh, who doesn't like welding? So I was doing a little modification to my uh, machine here. I put a, put a brace in here to hold the hood because uh, it was a little hard to control prior, so hopefully that should work better. Then taking and measuring. Depth, I am at 32 inches. I'm gonna go 32 inches here and make a mark right up there and then we're gonna start the process. Got it all laid out. Got the alignment uh, taken care of. Ready to start and making magic. All done. 102 louvers. Not so bad if I say so myself. <laughs> 